And we'll come to that maybe a bit later. But anyway, I'm, what I'm trying to say, first of all, is the Reformation is not Calvinism. <laughs> that was part of it. That was one part of the Reformation, okay? There were people in the Reformation who disagreed with them. So I think it's not quite right for the Calvinists then to speak of Calvinism as reformed theology and to take credit for the whole Reformation. I'm continuing to quote R.C. Sproul from the Geneva, New Geneva Study Bible. He says it contains a modern restatement of Reformation truth in its comments and theological notes. Its purpose is to present the light of the Reformation afresh. Once again, I have to say, he doesn't mean the Reformation, he means Calvinism. In, in fact, its purpose is an indoctrination into Calvinism. So if you've got the New Geneva Study Bible, you will find that its notes are strictly Calvinistic. Now, one thing that surprised me and that surprises a, a lot of people is the Catholic connection to Calvinism. It's amazing. When I first began talking to people and trying to understand and research and so forth, uh, Calvinists would say to me, well, but you're, wait a minute, you have to understand that John Calvin, he did not come up with the five points of Calvinism. And really, you could trace this back to Augustine. And in fact, let me quote you some leading Calvinists uh, who make that statement. Talbot and Crampton, a couple of leading Calvinists, say, quote, the system of doctrine which bears the name of John Calvin was in no way originated by him. B.B. Warfield, a name you might know, uh, says, quote, the system of doctrine taught by Calvin is just the Augustinianism common to the whole body of the reformers. So the debt which the creeds coming out of the Reformation owe to Augustine is, is what they call the Reformation creeds, is being acknowledged. Now that's rather surprising in view of the fact that Augustine is known as the originator of modern Roman Catholicism. <laughs> that the reformers are going by what Augustine taught. They've come out of the Catholic Church and yet Augustine is the premier Roman Catholic and we have a few more things to say about him than that. C.H. Uh, Spurgeon, a Calvinist, but he seems to go back and forth on that. He said, quote, perhaps Calvin himself derived it, that is Calvinism, mainly from the writings of Augustine. Alvin Baker says, quote, there is hardly a doctrine of Calvin that does not bear the marks of Augustine's influence. Uh, C. Greg Singer, he's another leading Calvinist, says, quote, the main features of Calvin's theology are found in the writings of St. Augustine to such an extent that many theologians regard Calvinism as a more fully developed form of Augustinianism. Now this was admitted by John Calvin himself. In his Institutes about so thick, you can't read five pages without coming across the name of Augustine. He quotes Augustine more than 400 times. And uh, he even uses such expressions as by the authority of Augustine. And he puts Augustine forth as the great authority and he quotes him as such. This is from the Institutes. Calvin said, quote, Augustine is so holy with me that if I wished to write a confession of my faith, I could do so with all fullness and satisfaction to myself out of his writings. I'll just give you a few quotes from the Institutes. Calvin himself, what he says, and I could give you hundreds of them. Quote, for Augustine, rightly expounding this message says, and he goes on to quote him, Augustine disguises not that he was often charged with preaching the doctrine of predestination too freely. In fact, Calvin got his doctrine of predestination from Augustine. I say with Augustine that the Lord has created those who, as he certainly foreknew, were to go to destruction, and he did so because he so willed. In your, if your mind is troubled, decline not to embrace the counsel of Augustine. I'm continuing to quote John Calvin, what he says, just brief excerpts, what he says about Augustine. I will not hesitate, therefore, simply to confess with Augustine that those things will certainly happen which he, God, has foreseen, and that the destruction of the non-elect consequent upon predestination 
is also most just. Here are the words of Augustine most admirably apply. This is a faithful saying from Augustine, but because his words will perhaps have more authority than mine, let us adduce the following passages from his treatise and so forth. So I think you get the impression. Calvinists themselves say, Calvinism is really Augustinianism. Calvin did not invent it, he got it from Augustine. Calvin himself quotes him more than 400 times. Calvin himself refers to him as the authority upon which his ideas hang. So I'm not saying this. This is what Calvin acknowledges and the leading Calvinists admit. Now, some interesting things, and wow, we have such limited time here. Some interesting things uh, about John Calvin. Uh, John Calvin was born in Noyon, France, 1509 A.D., in a very devout Catholic family. His father was the secretary and legal advisor to the bishop. The bishop ran the town. It was a heavily Catholic town. Uh, it's, a, it's a state church. And John Calvin himself, a little nepotism involved, he was put on the payroll of the Catholic Church at the age of 12. Now, some interesting things. In all of his voluminous writings, we don't really get an account of his conversion. He doesn't say, this is how I came to Christ, this is when I put my faith in Christ, this is when I believed the gospel, and so forth. He talks about a change that came in his life. He was a convert to Luther's Protestantism. He continued on the payroll of the Catholic Church for one year after his conversion to Luther's Protestantism. Even subsequent to his conversion to Luther's Protestantism, he helped a young lady enter a convent. Now this, of course, raises some questions. Furthermore, he has been a convert to Luther's Protestantism for one year when he begins writing his institutes, his major work, the Institutes of the Christian Religion. He finished that a year later, and, and the following year it was published. Now, of course, it was enlarged after that, but I think a point that we will have to acknowledge is this is not the Apostle Paul, folks. Uh, this is not a mature Christian who really knows the Word of God. What he gives you in the Institutes is not what he studied from the Bible after he became a Christian. It is what he studied from Augustine and from the Latin Vulgate as a Roman Catholic. And this is what he carries over into his conversion to Protestantism. And this is what he presents. I don't think any Calvinist could deny that. This is what is presented in his institutes. Now, I do not understand why so many prominent evangelicals today are under the spell of Calvin and Augustine. Let me quote a friend who I think has been in this pulpit. You could ask him about it. Norm Geisler has said, quote, St. Augustine was one of the greatest Christian thinkers of all time, one of the greatest theological and philosophical minds that God has ever so seen fit to give to his church. Well, the greatest Christian since New Testament times, this is what other Calvinists say about him, the greatest man that ever wrote Latin, his labors and writings more than those of any other man in the age in which he lived, contributed to the promotion of sound doctrine and the revival of true religion. Warfield, B.B. Warfield says, Augustine determined for all time the doctrine of grace. Now, I find that perplexing because Augustine, as I said, was the premier Roman Catholic. He wasn't just an ordinary Catholic. He's the most famous and influential of Roman Catholics. One of Catholicism's original four doctors of the church. They still have a feast day, you ex-Catholics would know. They're dedicated to him in the Catholic Church, August 28th, uh, the day of his death. Uh, remember uh, just a few months ago, Pope John Paul II had a commemoration for Augustine. Uh, he called him, quote, the common father of our Christian civilization. Calvin called himself an Augustinian theologian. Well, I could give you more quotes, uh, but uh, let me move on. Sir Robert Anderson, a name that might be known to some of you. He says, quote, the Roman Catholic Church 
was molded by Augustine 